Time to continue standing on the shoulders of the chess giants. And guys, we're going to analyze one of the one of my favorite games that I just cannot forget. Someone was mentioning it in one of the streams and it immediately came to mind. So we see the Alekine, well, in Spanish, we say Alekine. I, that's how I learned it. But I know that there's something that Alekine, Alekine, I don't know. But basically, e4, knight f6 is the that opening. And I remember the first time I looked at this opening, I immediately said, I don't want to play it because of all of the moves with the knight. Also, I remember in this game, they played knight f3, but I remember there's one variation with c4 that I just didn't like. But anyhow, at this point, the, the white pieces played knight f3. This is move number four. And already you see how every time we move a pawn, weaknesses are created. So after g6, dark squares start to get weaker on the king side. The white pieces play bishop c4, hitting the knight, knight goes to b6, bishop goes to b3, powerful bishop already on that diagonal, then bishop g7 and queen e2. They're putting pressure on e5. I don't want to go through this trade and allow them to trade queens. So queen e2. Also, I played the peer's defense and you know that we get this. Sorry for doing that quickly, but from black's perspective, this looks a lot like a modern, a peer's defense. And I know this e6 is thematic. So that queen e2 could be pretty annoying for the black pieces. Anyways, queen e2 was played, then knight c6, castle, castle, and then the prophylactic move pawn to h3. So I don't want to worry about bishop g4. If they wanted to do it, they should have done it sooner. And now after a5, again, we got to pay attention to our opponent's plans. They want to play a4. I'm going to stop it. Typically, this move has a drawback, which is b4 becomes weaker. Same concept. When they push g6, h h6 and f6 become weaker. When we push a4, b4 becomes weaker. However, I still got the c3 pawn in. If I have played c4, like I mentioned before, then there would be a hole on b4. So pawn takes, we take back with the pawn, knight d4, we are forced to just trade knights. And at this point, my main priority is to develop the rest of my minor pieces. However, e5 is being attacked, so I need to improve my rook by defending. Pawn e6, and guys, this pawn e6 move, I know we're criticizing the black pieces so badly because we know they lost, but truth is, for me that I played these systems as black, this is just not good. Mixing up the fianchetto with e6, then you really create a hole on f6. So that's not a good idea. If I have to do it, I do it. But I would rather play something like bishop e6. And then if they take me, mess up my pawn structure, but I don't get that hole on f6. And I think you're going to see what I mean. So time to improve this too. This knight, if I could put it anywhere where would I land that knight? Well, it'll be nice on f3, hitting the queen, defending the pawn, getting closer to the king side. So in order for me to get to f3, I need to be on d2. So knight d2, then knight d5, knight f3, queen goes to c5. And now a pretty powerful move, which is, if you remember, we had a lesson on how to use the files, but more importantly, the ranks. We use that rank to penetrate. I need to get rid of this bishop, the Fianchetto bishop. For that, I need bishop h6, and queen h4 is really necessary. So queen e4, getting ready for that attack. Queen b4, the black pieces know what's going on. They want to trade pieces. If the queens are traded, forget about that attack. I'm going to feel so much better as the black pieces. So how do I avoid it? Well, I need to block. Then knight b6, get out the way, bishop, or I'm going to take you. If you get out of the way, then finally I trade queens. So short said... I'm going to play b3, mess up my pawn structure, but I'm not going to trade pieces. And now I'm left with bishop, queen, knight, and rook to attack that king. So I'm going to have four attackers. They're going to have two defenders. And guys, this is really important. Simple math, more attackers than defenders. It should be a good attack. Now, with that said, after rook e8, any of us, including myself, will be like, okay, queen h4 has to be a good move, then bring the knight or the bishop. But here's the difference that we see in more experienced, stronger players. Instead of hurrying up with that, he's saying, you know what, this bishop needs to develop through here. Rook d1 first to control the file. The only open file on the board, I'm controlling it. And this bishop is not going to develop so quickly. So queen c5, now and only now queen h4, b6, and now this next move also 
only sophisticated players can find the guys. Any of us who go with bishop h6, well, George said, let me first do an in-between move here, make this queen go away, and then, only then, I go bishop h6. Now, they used an idea that I mentioned to you on lesson 79, 80, when we talked about the king's Indian attack. But anyways, guys, rook d8, punish them through the dark squares, through the open file, through the powerful diagonal, because our pieces are more active, they are still behind in development. So these two cannot protect each other. Bishop b7, the only piece that is doing nothing, I bring it over. And now the bishop comes back to g7, trying to fight this bishop off. Then rook goes to d7, and I'm already creating threats, guys. When your pieces are this active, tactics are going to be in the air. I have the queen, rook on the 7th rank, knight ready to jump over. So I'm threatening to just take, followed by queen f6, take on f7, game over. So they decided to just play rook f8 to avoid this capture on f7. Still, we removed the bishop finally. And now, instead of going for this move quickly, there's no rush, the same idea. The queen came over to do the rook lift, to do the lift and then roll over. Well, we see again, rook lift, rook roll over. And guys, it's so interesting how the knight is enough to contain whatever threats they might have. So rook d4, rook e8. Now I go check. Forget about going to h6, so the king has to go down. And now I'm trying to open up files. So h4, if I get to do h5, remove that pawn, this is over. So they said, forget about it, h5 is played. Of course, when I show this to my students, just this position as a puzzle, I'm like, find the best continuation. They think of moves like g4 and so on, but nobody mentions king h2. And that's because it's so counterintuitive, guys. But if you pay attention to how your pieces are so nicely, uh, placed, the dark squares are so weak, then of course it's easy to think. And if you've seen this game before, when you get a, a similar idea, it's going to be easy to just implement it. So king f4, then they're attacking the rook. George says, I don't care about the rook. And at this point, it's obvious that they're going to get in trouble. Now, if they had taken the rook, of course, this is made, nothing they could do about it. If they had done something like this, well, you got queen g6, I think. Yeah, queen g6 because of the pin. But anyhow, I felt like this is a game that every chess player needs to know. And let me know in the comments if you found some value in this lesson.